Hey Facebook, Don Victor here doing the Core 80 call. Today is number 12, and uh, here's the opening screen. Here's my mug, and I welcome you to the Core 80 call. Today we're going to look at a painting by Tansy, I think is how you pronounce his last name, Tansy. Uh, it's called The Triumph over mast mastery and uh and this video uh will be dedicated to the one and only bill jordan bill happens to be the first student at the academy of composition uh, he's a brilliant man and uh his story goes a little bit like this um, Bill's father was a, a painter, not a picture painter, but like a wall painter, a house painter. And so Bill grew up learning that profession, and that's what he did. He went out, he started, he had a career as a wall painter and wallpaperer, and, uh, and then when he retired, he decided, um, that it was time for him to live the dream that he always wanted to be, which was an artist. And, uh, and so he decided to go from painting people's walls to painting the stuff that goes on their walls. And, uh, and so he came to the academy because he knew that at his age, he didn't have time to waste. And he needed the biggest bang for his buck, which was uh, composition. He, he knew that and he knew where to go. And, um, and so he came and he was the first uh, student to show up with cash in hand and and uh and and, and passion and so uh <clears throat> he's been running ever since and uh and he's become a very very dear dear friend of mine so he's been he's been along this ride along with Costanza uh since the beginning and um I'm going to tell you guys I love Bill I love Bill and I love those who are already in the core 80. <clears throat> I'll tell you how much I love you guys. Sometimes in life, a fire comes along and starts burning down your house. And in the midst of that fire, you've got to make some, some serious, serious decisions or people are going to get hurt. Houses are going to be burned. Neighborhoods could go up. You could lose a lot of stuff. So a couple years ago, I was trying to uh, make my dad's famous french fries. And like an idiot, <clears throat> I put a lid on top of this pot of boiling oil, thinking, oh, if I put the lid on top, it'll kind of, you know, heat up quicker. Now, luckily, I paid attention in chemistry class, and when I went to lift up the, 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 uh, the lid, I was always told never to lift up the lid and facing you because the steam could hit you in the face. And so I just... Always lift up the lid and point it away so the steam runs back. Well, that's what I did. I, I, I just naturally did that. And what happened was when I lifted the lid and all that new air and all that new oxygen came rushing into that pot, it hit that hot, hot oil and just <laughs> shot out this flame. Now, if I would have turned that... Um, that uh, pot towards me, I would have burned my face off. I would have died probably. Uh, my wife at the time and my baby, my little baby was, Sophia was, was not even walking. She was just crawling on the floor. That, that hot oil could have fell and just burned and killed her. So it was an intense moment. And... Uh, 
And what, one thing about composition that you have to understand, the nuances can make it or break it. And in this case, when I lifted up that pot, the only difference was going from this way to this way. It was a flick of the wrist, and it was the flick of a wrist that saved our life. Now, the story doesn't end there. When the flame shot out of the pot, it melted our, our stove. It, 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 it caught the wall on fire. The fire ran up the side of the wall, took out the ceiling. I mean, it happened super, super fast. And in that moment, I was like, ah, what the hell? You know, my wife was running back and forth screaming freaking out the baby will you know sophie was on the floor like what's going on you know pretty fire you know i don't know but it was insane it was in a moment of pure insanity and craziness and in the midst of all that fire in that kitchen i looked at my wife i looked at my baby i looked at the house and then i looked at the fire and I said, fuck you, fire. That's exactly what I said. I swore at that shit. I was like, you're not going to beep, 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 beep. Take my baby. Take my wife. Take my house. You're not going to kill me. And I swore and I spoke to the damn thing. And in that moment, I got like this immense clarity. It was, I don't know, it was like ninja clarity, right? Like the fire was moving in slow motion. Like, you know, my baby's like, bloop, bloop, bloop. Evelyn was like running, but like, doo, doo, doo. like slow motion, crazy slow, again, crazy in slow motion, like beep, 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 right? It, it, everything just went super slow. But my mind was like, doo, 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 doo. it was like super fast, right? And I just knew, I was like, oh, let me go over to the little cabinet and pull out the fire extinguisher, right? And I put it out, and I got a little burn on my hand from it. But it was this crazy moment, and, and don't tell anybody, I kind of secretly liked it. Because, like, I was in such control, like... In the midst of all of this danger, all of this risk, and I was so comfortable in that spot. I, I, I don't know if this is what firemen go through or what, but it, it, this shit was not going to take me, take my baby, take my wife, take my house. And I, I, was, I was not going to have it. <laughs> and I didn't care what the hell this thing was. So this is the passion I'm coming more and more and more into this understanding that the core 80, the love that I have for the core 80, the passion that I have for the core 80 is the same, very, very similar, if not exactly the same, that I have, that I had in that moment where the fire was just trying to burn everything down. And I looked at Evelyn, I looked at the baby, I looked at the house, I looked at my life, and I was like, hell no. And so that's the level of intensity and seriousness that I approach composition. Now that might sound weird, but I don't give a shit. I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it because it's power. I'm obsessed with it because it gives the artist such a level of control, such a level of power, such a level of clarity that even when the fire comes, you're able to freaking think through it, regain your composure and execute your plan. And so, no matter what your life is, it could be a relationship thing, it could be something in your business, it could be something with your family, shit's going to happen. Fire is going to pop up all the time. And you've got to be able to compose, take order, take uh, arrange that. You've got to be... Um, one who can cosmos it, like, you know, take hold of this thing, of this world, of this arrangement, of all this stuff, and bring order to it, bring control to it, bring peace back to it. And that is what the composer's mindset does. When you get into that place, not only in your artwork, in your images, but in your life. And trust me, we all, no matter who we are, 
how rich we are, how poor we are, how white we are, how black we are, how woman we are, man we are, whatever the hell you are, we all have to deal with crap. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. The question is, are you going to be wise enough to carry a damn umbrella? And if you don't have an umbrella, are you going to be creative enough to go and put your head underneath a, a, a big, big leaf? You know, or are you just going to say, screw it, I'll embrace the rain, I'm taking a shower. So this is what we get to do as human beings. We get to use our intelligence, we use our creativity, we problem solve stuff. No matter what the hell it is, and no matter who it is. And like our thrust maps, we got to have a center focus. We have to have a clear point of dominant contrast. That thing that becomes the soloist, that becomes the most important thing. It's not the subject per se, but it is a thing that we focus on. And my focus right now is the core 80. You don't understand the power of who and what that is. My job over the next uh, 87 days, 88 days, is to communicate on a daily basis the power, the intensity, the seriousness of that. And if, and if you want to be part of that, Facebook message me so that you can come into that fold. You can be trained. You can take your, le- your art. I don't care if you're a professional artist. I don't give a shit if you've been painting for 40 years. Trust me. You ain't seen nothing like this. You're going to think you know what you know. And you're going to come into this space and you're going to be like, what the hell was I doing for the last 40 years? I'm bold enough to say it because I've seen it for the last 25 years. I've heard stories, people coming in, and when they get into this information, they weep. They weep. So we are moving forward. We are piling, you know, we're kicking doors down. And when I kick a door down, I want to see 10 of you ready to come and be profound. Profound people, profound artists, and and leave a profound legacy. And part of that legacy is highly composed, wonderful, profound, great, and amazing, badass pieces of artwork. All right? So now, on that note, let's take a look at a beautiful composition. And I dedicate this to Bill Jordan because Mr. Bill Jordan used to be a painter. And now he is a painter. Let us take a look at the work. The mastery. Triumph. Triumph over mastery. Look at this beautiful work of design. So simple. So elegant. So powerful. So clear. You don't walk in here and say, oh, I think this is about an elephant running from a mouse. What the, what the hell are you talking about? Look at the strength in this man's body. He almost looks like a gymnast, right? Like those guys, uh, you know, like he's going to do a flagpole off that, off that ladder. So let, when I look at this work, let me show you what I see and, uh, and how I engage with this piece of uh, work as a composer. So first of all, let's look at our thrust map, okay? We're going to look for our dominant horizontal, dominant contrast, a dominant vertical, a dominant diagonal, and a dominant arc. In this case, we're actually going to look for a dominant arabesque, which is like a series of arcs, okay? Okay. So we can see that across the top, that's very clear that that is our dominant horizontal. It is the place that divides the the top from the bottom. The angle of his arm and and the angle of the uh, painting roller, the roller, um, and all of the lines that, that show the rolling are all in that same diagonal. So that tells us that that thrust, that's the, that's the dominant diagonal thrust. Now you may think the dominant diagonal thrust would be his body. And you could make an argument for that. But I, the reason why I, I, I would say that it's not 
is for two reasons. One, his body is important, but in terms of the significance of the piece, his arms are far more important. And two, his arms are in greater contrast, they're dark against a light background, and his body, which has that diagonal, for the most part is a, um, a darker value on a darker background. Okay, so it's a, it's a very low contrast there where the arms and, uh, and the paint roller are of high contrast. Okay, so that's why I would say that that is a dominant diagonal. Now, obviously, the latter is very, very evidently the, uh, evident that it is the dominant vertical in the piece. It is a dominant vertical thrust. The highest point of contrast uh, I'm going to say is right there on his hand against the wall. And actually, if you look at the light around the wall, the light value I mean, on the wall that's around his hand, I mean, and then you go up, you extend your eye up, you start to see that it fades away. It, it gets in a little darker value. As you go up, it gets darker. This is called vignetting. Right when you di when you darken the edges, so there's a vignette or a gradient that goes from dark to light, and right around the top of his hand, not the bottom, under the bottom, you can see there's a little bit of a dark, um, a little bit of a dark uh, uh, value, a darker value. So the top of the hand is the more important, the part where you actually see him holding the handle. So you have to look at these nuances. Remember the fire story, the nuance. I, I would have been dead if my wrist would have flipped backwards instead of forward. It's that sometimes it's just a little, little shift alignment of something that can make or break a painting, that can undermine all the work that you've done. Sometimes, how many times have you seen a work of art and <clears throat> the painting is really, really nice and then all of a sudden, the, the signature looks like crap. I mean, it's just big or gaudy or just totally out of place. So, um, now with the arc, it's interesting. If you look at the, the curve of his body, right, that beautiful lap of his back, and it comes up and you can see like where his hairline and his neck meet. You can you can see this beautiful curve that's coming through, and then it comes it comes from the uh, underside of his body, the, the far side, up over to his thigh and his knee that's closest to us. And you can see how that leg then comes back, and there's this beautiful curve, and it comes down. And then in his shadow area, there's a curve at the bottom where his feet are, and it comes back up. And you can just see that whole shadow is just this beautiful moving curve. Um, and so, in this case, I could just do an arc, but I wanted you to kind of just flow through the whole painting and, and, and to see the arabesque that, uh, that's here. You see how your eye just curves through, and it leads you back to the, uh, the rolling pin, the, the pin, not oh, the pin, the roller, I'm sorry. <clears throat> now, something I also want to show you is I want to play with some diagonals because repetition is an element of design and it is a very powerful uh, technique to bring clarity, to bring clarity, to bring clarity. And yes, I repeated that three times so that you would understand it brings exactly clarity. You can even extend that same diagonal um, in the relationship of the um, the arm on the shadow, uh, the uh, the the little steps on the ladder in the shadow. Okay, so there's a lot of repetition in this image, and that repetition brings confusion. I'm playing with you. It brings clarity. Okay. So when we eliminate, it's just like when we're painting, if we eliminate all of the colors, you know, we don't use every color in, in the palette, we limit those things down to, um, down to uh, a limited palette, it brings clarity, it brings harmony, it brings unity, it brings beauty, it brings elegance, because we brought order to it, we arranged it, we, we edited it, we emphasized certain things because we limited it. 
Okay, so for example, if you have all the colors in a rainbow and you limit it and you get rid of all of the warm colors except one, well now you have this beautiful, cool painting with this wonderful glow of warmth somewhere. Hold on one second. All right, cool. <clears throat> so by limiting things, you actually increase its beauty because you give it clarity, you give it mood. It's the same thing when you're dealing with line and space. When you li uh, uh, limit, uh, um, limit the amount of lines that you use, it brings clarity, it brings order, it brings beauty, it brings grace into the work. It brings peace into the work because each line is a thought. And the more uh, that you repeat it, the, clear the clearer that thought is. If it's a bunch of different lines, it's going to get very, very chaotic. Because it's saying a lot of different things. So here is this other diagonal. And you can see how it's being repeated and bringing your eye up and through. So this is a very, uh, just a very simple design. Okay. But in its simplicity, it's very, very powerful. Very, very elegant. And very, very effective. And so when you go to a museum, when you look at other people's work, I want you to, to look at the thrust maps. And I'm going to do a lot of thrust maps over the next 100 days because it's just a very simple technique I can share with you, train you in it, you know, here for free by just watching these. And you're going to begin to go to a museum and have a totally different experience. You're going to be able to look at your own artwork and begin to make better decisions. You're go if you apply these little techniques to what you're doing today, you're going to take you're going to grow in leaps and bounds. Now, if you want to accelerate that, then join the Core 80. Facebook message me about it so we can set up a time and have a conversation. We'll take a look at your artwork and see, you know, where your strengths are. Most artists are very strong in a certain in a couple areas of composition and extremely weak in in, in others. And if you're strong in this, then you know, encourage you in it, move forward. But then you're weak in these other areas. Well, then we work on those and we build you up. And, um, <clears throat> you know, our system is not about making you into a brick or into, you know, making everybody look the same um, or any of that kind of nonsense. We are about helping you chisel so that you're a perfect stone your own living stone and what that means is that when you when, when you become when you get in relationship with other people you don't look just like them you don't look like them okay you have your own groove you have your own part your own processes right your own uh your own scars if you will you've been chiseled your own way and you, and we need to take a look at you and analyze you critique you not just your artwork but you and find your treasure, find your value, just like in a work of art. We need to know, hey man, what's your dominant contrast? What are you obsessed about in your life? What's your dominant vertical? What's your power stance? Where are you at rest? What's your dominant horizontal? What drives you? What's your passion? That's your dominant vertical. Where's your grace? Hmm? That's your dominant curve. So it applies to your life. It applies to your artwork. This is why we're creating not just professional artists who sell artwork or emerging artists. We're just not training artists. For us to win means that you have to not only be able to create at a high level, compose at a high level, but also tell amazing stories. Share something of value with another person. So when they come and they see your work, they leave with uh, an idea, a feeling, an experience. Something profound, something that they could take and guide themselves as they go through life. I mean, if you don't want to, you know, create work at that level, then I'll be, you know, keep watching the videos, you know, uh, and, and good luck. That's awesome. But if you want to compose at that higher level, if you want to live at that higher level, you want to get out of the 
<clears throat> the local nonsense and start becoming cosmopolitan. And, and I don't mean just a citizen of the world. I mean cosmo, meaning the world, meaning to order, to put government, to put order into something, to put, a, to arrange. It means to compose. To compose our earth, to compose our art. What do you think? Uh, geometry. You see, all, you see the geometry behind me? Look at that beautiful lines and spaces. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Sexy. Damn right it's sexy. Look at that beautiful little cheetah. Oh, on the other side of me. That's a sexy cheetah. That's a sexy horse. Look at that snail. Have you ever seen a sexy snail? That's a sexy snail. <laughs> that sounds kind of gross, actually. But anyway, still sexy. So this is what we are about. We want profound ideas. We want awesome ideas. We want awesome people. We want awesome art. And that's what we do here. So I thank you for watching. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Remember to share, share, share with your community. Um, you know, just click the little share button. You know, share it with your friend. Share it on your, your profile page. Share it in some groups that you're in. And also leave some comments. If you have questions, um, you know, the community is there to help you. Uh, answer them. I'll jump in sometimes and answer them. But leave some comments as well. All right? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. I love you guys.